Okay, welcome to my talk. This is a talk about the timer survey with Muse. I don't have a lot of time, so I am going to focus only on a few of our most recent results. The timer survey is a survey about the central region of these galaxies. And when one thinks about uh, these galaxies, uh, the classical picture is something like uh, what I show here on the left, which is an image of M81. So you, you have a main galaxy disk, and at the center of the disk, you have a smooth uh, spheroidal stellar component that uh, presumably is uh, dispersion dominated, is supported dynamically by the velocity dispersion of stars. This is the classical picture of, um, of the bulge in, in the center of these galaxies. But it turns out that most galaxies in the universe actually uh, have a bar and bar are expected, bars are expected to uh, induce a number of fascinating phenomena in, in these galaxies. And one of the things that bars are expected to do is to push gas from um, the disk to the central region of the galaxy. And this is what you see here in this uh, dust lanes, um, basically the gas being pushed uh, by the bar towards the center of the galaxy. And it's expected that this gas at some point in the center will be compressed and form a new um, stellar uh, structure in the center. And uh, it's not clear, but it's one, one of the things that I'm going to show here today, whether or not this uh, components built by the bars is what we call a pseudo bulge, um, which is uh, identified photometrically as a photometric bulge component uh, that has an exponential light profile. So from a theoretical point of view, um, bars are expected to build this component in the center, uh, which rotates very fast. So this is a basically a, a nuclear disk, and, and which contrasts with, uh, of course, with the classical picture of the bulge that it's uh, dispersion dominated, because this is rotation dominated. And, and what I'm going to show here today is also um, that this, um, with the news data, we can show that this exactly, uh, the observations are exactly as expected, the bars are building this, um, this nuclear disk components in the center. And these nuclear disks are important because they hold clues uh, to the major history of galaxies because they uh, can be destroyed uh, relatively easily uh, with mergers. And um, they also hold clues to the gas accretion history of galaxies because every time that gas falls um, in the disk region dominated by the bar, the bar will push gas to the center and, and create a new wave of star formation in, in the nuclear disk. So you can, you can study the gas accretion history by, by looking at the star formation history of the nuclear disk. And uh, the star formation history of the nuclear disk can also tell you when the bar formed. Basically the first burst of star formation in the nuclear disk is when the bar formed and for the first time pushed gas towards the center. So to study all this, we created the MUSE survey um, which um, is a survey of 24 nearby galaxies. So we have news data for the central few kiloparsecs of all these galaxies. And because we were interested in, in understanding what these uh, disk-like components in the center are, they, these galaxies were selected to visually uh, show uh, structures that resemble disks in the center. Uh, so here are uh, two examples of, of galaxies in our sample. Uh, and you can see also the red squares are uh, the Muse field of view. And for the same galaxies I show now, the reconstructed images uh, from, the, from the Muse data cubes. And you can see that in some cases we have the full bar um, covered by the, the Muse field of view. This is um, on, on the right here. And this allowed us to study the stellar population properties of bars, for example, with unprecedented spatial resolution. And this uh, is going to be uh, presented by Justus Neumann in a talk in this conference. So I invite, I invite you to go and see his talk. Here are just uh, color maps from the same reconstructed images to highlight again the dust lanes of, of the gas being pushed towards the center and forming this uh, structure in the center um, that, that is constituted of relatively new stars. Uh, to study all the millions of spectra that we got from, from, the, um, from the new survey, uh, timer survey, um, we developed the GIST pipeline, uh, which has a fantastic um, graphical interface where you can see the results of the analysis of the spectra. Uh, this was developed by Adrian Bittner. He has a poster here about this, and it was very, very helpful. I invite you to, 
go and see his poster as well. So these are two kinematic maps that we derived for the two galaxies I showed before. These, these were derived with GIST. And for the two galaxies, what I'm showing here is uh, a velocity map, a velocity dispersion map, um, and then the two maps of H3 and H4, which are uh, higher order moments of the line of sight velocity distribution. So in the two cases, and actually in all cases we've studied, or almost all cases we studied, we can see in the central region a uh, component, a stellar component that rotates fast, has low velocity dispersion. Uh, so basically a rotation dominated component, not a dispersion dominated component as you would expect for a classical bulge. And we also see a anti-correlation between H3 and velocity, which means that the orbits of this uh, rotation dominated component in the center are near circular, which is what you would expect for, for a disk. And finally, we also see that the H4 values are elevated, which means that this component is not alone in the center, but it's sitting um, on top of, of the bar and the main disk that are uh, also in the central region. So all these uh, properties are exactly as expected for uh, bar-built nuclear disks. So in the secular evolution scenario in which bars are pushing gas to the center and creating a fast, fastly rotating um, stellar component in the center. Here you can see also maps of V over sigma uh, for the two galaxies, uh, just to highlight again that these components are different from the main disk, is a separate structure from the main disk, as you can see here, uh, and they are fastly rotating at the central region. Here I show radio profiles of V over sigma for most galaxies in our sample. And you can see, for example, if you look at the top left galaxy, you can see a signature of the main disk here with elevated values of your sigma. And then you see a secondary peak of your sigma close to the center, which is basically the nuclear disk. And this peak uh, allows us to um, uh, measure or define a kinematic radius for the nuclear disk. So we define a radius for the nuclear disk from kinematics, which is the, the radius at which the V over sigma in the disk has a peak. And of course, this high velocity, high V over sigma values here contrast with the expectation for classical bulges, as I said. We also studied in Bittner et al. Uh, 2020, the stellar population properties of these nuclear disks, and we sh he showed that uh, it's also inconsistent with uh, classical bulges. He has a poster also about uh, his paper in this conference, and you should go and, and check it out. So we established that um, these components uh, in the center of these galaxies are indeed built by bars and, and fastly rotating. But they are, the other very important question is whether or not um, these this, this components are what people identified as photometric pseudobulges, basically exponential uh, photometric components at the center of these galaxies. And it turns out that yes. Um, so we looked at uh, carefully done photometric decompositions from the literature. I, I point, point uh, the papers here. Um, and in fact, for most of the galaxies on, in our sample, they find a component that is exponential in the center. So as expected for a disk, as expected for pseudo bulge. Of course, this only happens um, when the, the, the compositions are done very, very carefully with very good data. We explain this uh, better in the paper. So this indicates that indeed, pseudobulges are basically nuclear disks built by bars. But a more powerful way to check this out or to confirm this is to look at the sizes of the two different components. So we have the half-light radii that is determined photometrically for the pseudobulges or the exponential bulges. And we have also the kinematic radii that are derived from the kinematic maps for the nuclear disks. And if I plot the distribution of the ratio of, of these two components, what we find is that they follow, uh, the ratio follows a normal distribution. So there is a strong correlation between the two radii and the sigma values uh, for, for this um, distribution uh, matches the uncertainty um, from the measurements of, of the uh, photometric half-light radius. So indeed exponential photometric bulges are basically um, nuclear disks built by the bars and fastly rotating. This is a, um, a very strong confirmation of, of this scenario because the two radii are basically very uh, strongly correlated and they are derived 
in uh, via completely different um, uh, procedures. So I'm go going to the end of my talk. I just want to show this beautiful uh, V over Sigma map gallery for most of the galaxies in our sample. And you can see nuclear disks basically everywhere separated from the main disk sitting in the center and rotationally supported, not dispersion uh, supported as you would expect for a classical bulge. And I just wanna finish with my take home message. So the stellar kinematics and the stellar population properties of the nuclear disks in the Muse timer server are consistent with a, a bar driven uh, formation. So consistent with the secular evolution scenario and they contrast with the merger driven formation of classical bulges. So they are completely different um, component. And the exponential disk-like bulges or pseudo-bulges that a uh, number of studies identified in, in photometric studies are indeed rotationally supported nuclear disks uh, built by bars. Thank you very much. I will stop here. <laughs>